This is an interesting bike, but we're not looking at the bike yet. That comes in a few days. What we're looking at here today is the motor. A SRAM equipped e-bike. That means a SRAM motor. Yes, a SRAM motor, a SRAM battery, SRAM electronic control system. Okay, auto shift. First of all, we've got the control system on the front here. I want to start with this. It uses, the e-bike controls use the standard wireless pods. It also has a SRAM display, which is interesting. Their information on a digital display, all to do with the motor. You've got only two power modes. One's called range and one's called rally. It comes with the new SRAM XO electronic shifting because this is not just a SRAM motor, which is inside there. And the electronic shifting means that this also has auto shift. But you just pedal and all the shifting is taken care of for you. The SRAM motor has 95 Newton meters, 250 watts with a 720 watt hour battery. The battery uses the latest 21700 uh, cells in it. Brand new speed sensor developed specifically for auto shift. It has six magnets. The new standard of receiver here. You have a higher resolution for reading and understanding the movement of the wheel. A more accurate and a better shift pattern when it comes to auto shift. It also allows you with a walk mode, it's actually really useful because if you're trying to push your bike up a hill, if you actually have to move the bike with this thing, you don't have to do that. Just a little bit of rollback and the bike will move for you. So once you take that off, I'm throwing it on the floor. The battery system, the plug is magnetized. So okay. these guys meet magnets. So it's dead easy to plug in, dead easy to remove. So yeah, that guy comes off and then it just slides out. And that's 720 watt, yeah? 720 watt are, and it uses the brand new 21700 sales. Awesome. Here's my friend Tofu. Hey guys, okay. I'm his friend. <laughs> German YouTuber. What do you think of the... Uh... I was a little bit speechless when I sit in the gondola and think about that SRAM is bringing out in a drive unit. They have auto, sh auto shift, they have yeah. the trans transmission. It's crazy. They have Everything everything. Is good together. Yeah, yeah. Right, everybody, so here we are on the new SRAM motor. We've got something new to play with, haven't we? Eagle powertrain we're riding today, so yeah. that's our first e-mountain bike system. It's a big move, no? Absolutely, yeah. This is our first complete e-bike system. Uh, the cool thing is it's like integrating all the EMTB components, motor, battery, display, yeah. with our transmission. So it all communicates wirelessly through access. You see it's a super clean cockpit if you Look down on your bars, it's all wireless. Uh, you can control everything for our access pods. In terms of a motor, this is the much rumored SRAM motor we're talking about. So in fact, it's a Bros hardware that we're using, but we put our own software in there. And... It just shifted on its own. Yeah, that's what it does now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to go left. It's just shifted again on its own. Wow, this so, is interesting. So this is what we call auto shift. Um, it works in conjunction with coast shift. Yeah. So these are two major functions that the integration delivers. Auto shift basically puts you in a certain cadence window, if you will. Yeah. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's how you could think of it. So as we pedal along and we go on for our ride, you'll see that it just tries to keep you in that comfortable cadence. Yeah. You could set that cadence by adjusting the pedal speed on the fly. Yeah. So you basically just press the, the right button for a second or so, and then it pops up this pedal speed menu. Yeah and you can adjust it to be a bit more higher cadence or lower cadence. Plus right. one if you want a bit of a higher cadence. Oh, I see, yeah, I see what's going A bit more spinny on. and maybe yeah. the minus settings if you want to just cruise along. Yeah, it just keeps you in that cadence window and we think it works really well even in, in proper mountain biking terrain. Yeah. Maybe you get the best experience if you override it here and there. You can always shift manually even if it's engaged. Coast shift, you can also shift if the bike is just rolling. So you don't need to turn the pedals. The motor turns the chain ring independently of the cranks. Yeah. And so that allows us that the bike actually in auto shift keeps you in the right gear all the time throughout the descent. Yeah. And as soon as you get back on the pedals, you have the right gear. This is fully wireless, no? Yeah, so this is what we aim for to give a rider really a very simplistic, minimalistic experience. Okay, now I haven't changed gear, I've just um, stopped. Yeah. So, so you can pair this with a, any ANT Plus head unit. Yeah. 
and the beauty of that is that you can yeah get as much as you want like you can get the full navigation experience or you could just run it simplistic as on your bike that's probably the setup you would choose for your local trails where you know mm. your way around and these pods i've actually never used these pods before and they're quite nice they're tucked away underneath the bar we certainly see that many riders get stuck in the small cogs on an e-bike just yeah. because it's so powerful and this system will really bring you into the bigger cogs that make a ton more sense to distribute that load over the cassette and just use the entire range of the cassette yeah. if you will put it into the middle setting which is the stock setting and you'll see now it's, yeah. it's already pretty fast paced cadence not yeah. as slow as you would typically ride maybe but you can tweak it in, in either direction mm. and especially for technical climbing like here i guess medium is like the minimum you should go so we we recommend riders go into the plus one plus two after you i'll go first okay so okay yeah it's already doing its thing right this is interesting it's quite steep Whoa. okay it's shifted already as it's loose it's not super okay it's doing it wow that's impressive so which gear am i in i'm already in first okay just switch to second the trail is actually quite steep i'm sat down got the saddle up use the wireless thing we're going to try and look ahead i'm not really focusing on the shifting now i'm just looking at the trail i'm trying to forget the shift obviously choose my lines carefully and this is technical this is steep okay the motor's got the power right i'm gonna stop here because i was in fact it's some of the smoothest shifting i've used on a on an e-bike so we're starting on the hill start the motor it's got that bro sound but it's quiet lots of talk and i did not touch the shifter i've gone all the way up this hill without touching the shifter we're gonna go this way Through the rocks it's shifted and it's changed again and again i'm not touching it now coasting. coasting shifting yes it's shifted into the 12th gear and it calculates my speed it's very silent yes it's shifted for me i didn't have to think about it okay it's shifted for me again let's stop we're in about seventh it's about right i'd have that there it's shifted again for me look at that place so let's keep going i stopped take the sharp corner bike's ready to go I'm moving myself on the trail. Okay, here we go. We're doing ready for a photo. Okay, everyone so i'm back wow what an interesting experience that's my main reaction when i'm doing the descent the bike just coast is it called coast shifting coast shift yeah coast shift it just shifts down the block how does it know yeah so we have a speed sensor that's in the rear dropout basically on the other side of the derailleur okay um and the thing is we have six magnets instead of one so we get a way better speed signal there we use that in conjunction with bunch of other data that we can gather from the bike including the rider input and the speed of the bike it's going to put you in the right gear as soon yeah. as you get back on the pedals when you coast um, and that's a really neat feature because typically you can't and i almost felt like the coast shift was like 
from my kind of riding level was almost the most useful thing because it really just takes away thinking. You can override it any time and, and I also see certain people for certain trails might just turn it off for a couple of minutes. Do a technical uphill or something in, in manual mode and just select the gears because you really anticipate the trail okay. features. And then if you flick it back on and you're on trail coasting downhill, it's just something, that's just the place where you can typically shift. Okay. And if you let auto, auto shift to its thing, it's gonna be, it's always gonna be a lot closer than not shifting, right? So you're, you're never gonna be in that super heavy gear when the trail starts slowing down yeah. or other way around, you're never gonna pedal mm. into nothing just because the trail mm. was speeding up in the lower section. Yeah. Did you tune it for a particular type of rider, like a beginner who's going to be stopping more and thinking about what they're doing? So the harder you ride and the more technical the, the terrain is, the more you'll want to override it here and yeah. there, just because you're on the edge of the performance of the yeah. system and, and bike rider combination, yeah, if you will. Yeah. So for a beginner, if you, if you stick with the middle mode, you're probably get, just going to be fine on pretty much any trail you're riding. Yeah. The more picky you are about your cadence, for example, yeah. the more you'll be maybe here and there annoyed with the choice that mm -hmm. auto shift makes but to be fair like often it will shift in technical terrain where you wouldn't otherwise shift mm. and it's fine right you just got away from yeah. it. you got through everything and so that's where it comes to its own is where you when you really like focus on that climb and you just let it do its thing and you have such a powerful e-bike you don't necessarily need to be in that yeah. absolute perfect gear also your cadence can vary slightly so you oh. might want to go for certain segments a bit faster mm -hmm. and what the bike tries to understand from your pedaling is that it doesn't just shift up just because you raise your cadence okay and of course it's not perfect like there are going to be instances where you wouldn't have shifted because you already see what's happening on the trail because yeah, the bike can't see where you're going it can't see ahead sure. it's reacting to what yeah. you're doing at them in yeah. that moment it's predictive in a way that you see what's happening and you changing your cadence kind of makes the system predictive yeah. to some degree what typically happens you would raise your cadence for maybe a yeah. rocky section on the trail. And then that's a bit of a tricky thing for the system to figure out, but we're trying really hard to find the right balance of when it would shift up and when it would just stay in that gear. So yeah, yeah. you also said it didn't shift quite as much sometimes as you thought it would. Yeah. And that was something that came out in development, early yeah. versions. They shifted way noticed, more. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was just all over the place when we started tinkering with it. And then we found that uh, if it actually shifts less, it's much more of a consistent ride feel in you. Yeah. So something else I noticed is the silence of the system. Only when you're on a steep climb do you hear the gear shift, but you hear the chain move. But otherwise, if you, you've got to really listen for it, you hear the tss, But otherwise you wouldn't know it's been shifting. You just have a look down and go, oh, then this motor is very silent. And you don't have to back off the power when shifting, no, do you? No, you just push through. Okay, so because that's a new mentality to take forward because normally we're trying sure. to preserve our drivetrains with e-bikes, but now with this system, you can just ride and sort of forget. Yeah. It's basically like an iPhone when you mm. take it out and you take a better photo than most people mm. would with a traditional camera, just because it does so much computational stuff yeah, yeah. in the background. That's kind of how this is. You're just supposed to focus on a great ride, yeah. uh, not mess with all the electronics mm. and all the stuff that's going on in the background. It only has two power modes, but I have to say, you don't need more. Yeah. Really, it does. It's absolutely fine. I left it mostly in the rally mode, but I never, and the battery, I probably did five, six hundred meters of climbing. I used about 30% of the battery, so. You can do some pretty big rides if you play with those modes and you yeah. could always tinker in the app and like uh, put the range mode even uh, let a bit lighter yeah, of yeah. support and then you would have even more range, mm. so. I really think that the SRAM motor in its own is no big surprise. It's very much in line with the other bros motors out there, I have to say. It's silent, it's smooth, it's solid, and it's got 95 newton meters of torque. The feature which really sets it apart is the full wireless nature and the auto shift. It does give everybody something. From a settings point of view, I used the plus two setting and I arrived at that feeling where it gave me what I felt was the ideal amount of cadence most of the time when I needed it. Auto shift is more of a, a help and it's designed so you can override it. And I did override it at times, but fundamentally I mostly left it alone and let just let it do its thing to see what it could do. It's only available on the high range bikes to start with. As with all SRAM products, we expect to see this kind of uh, product filter down the system within a few years to be available on the mid range and lower range spec bikes. Thanks guys for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.